Yo, 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 welcome back to Crazy Bowl TV. Thank you so much. Welcome to LFC Vibe at the Barber Shop. Let's have some Barber Shop talk. You guys know what the deal is. Please share, subscribe, like, notification bell. Very, very important. You don't want to receive this show two to three or even a week later. Uh, please share, 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 and don't forget to click that notification button. Welcome, welcome, guys. Come sit down. Come chillax in the barbershop. Let's talk. I know some of you guys are watching the Champions League game. It's okay. You could watch the game and still listen to me, Pablo, around. Uh, we know we're going to talk about this European night. Probably the last European night for club. Can we do it one more time? And Klopp and his boys do it one more time, European night. That's the deal for Thursday. We're rolling up in Atalanta, and we're going to hit them with three or four goals and come out with a clean sheet. Big up, MK To. Big up, MK To. He says stage five, all good. My friend, I told you, when after the match, Somehow, some way, I felt like Liverpool might pull this league out. I don't know how. Don't ask me. But this is Liverpool. They like to embarrass you when you think they you um, all it's all done. And then out of nowhere, they pull something out of the hat. So I don't want to give up on them yet. I'm not giving up on Liverpool on Thursday or even on uh, for the league because. Especially with the league, anything can happen. You know, City is what two points ahead of us with what two goals. It's not enough. They have some very tricky. You know, yes, that City and yeah, everybody will say they can do it and blah 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 blah. But what people don't understand is this is the EPL. If they drop points, then everybody's back in play, and it, it's not even have to be a loss. It just have to be a draw. Arsenal and Liverpool are right back in there. No diddy. So, yeah, man. Tell you, I'm Keto. We, you know, we write it, man. This is the last time. This is the last few, what, seven? The next seven matches guaranteed uh, could be the last matches for club. And, you know, with me, I've been a club fan since when he won Borussia Dortmund, their first league. I've been following him since. I've been campaigning. For him to come to Liverpool and he did show up. He has given me one of the greatest moments any Liverpool fan could ever have. So I'm not going to shit on him or crap on him or whatever you want to say because things are not as what it's supposed to be. His record is what his record is. We can debate it back and forth or whatever, but he's my manager until the final game. So I'm riding with my manager. It's no need for me to be boohing and crying and all that kind of stuff. But I'm riding with him. He makes mistakes, and I'm hoping that he will make some adjustments for the next few games that we have with it. And then we see what happens in May. You know what I'm saying? So with me, I'm riding with my boys, man. The boys will make Thursday special. That's exactly what I'm saying, man. This is Liverpool. This is Liverpool. Nobody, yes, and it's not Anfield. But don't sleep. We've done it before. We've rolled into Atlanta and scored five goals. So what makes you think that we can't go um, over there and do the same? That's what I'm saying. It's it's it. it I mean, what <laughs> the crazy thing is if this whole documentary is to make it special where I think it's Disney who has the documentary now. I'm here to make this whole documentary very special is Liverpool rolling in Atlanta and qualify for the next round. And somehow, some way, pulls out of the hat and win the league. Do you know how special that moment will be? It is going to be so crazy. It's probably people will be, you know, you know how some fans are, oh, never been done before. We were out of that. That's what I'm saying. This is Liverpool, man. And if you remember all the great years, all the Hollywood years that Liverpool have done, even before Klopp even got here. 
you know, we could go to Benitez and his 2005, um, even the year after, 2006, FA Cup final, Liverpool versus West Ham. You know, when every single time you think Liverpool is down and out, they pull something up. That's why I'm not giving up on them. It is hard. It's going to be very hard. Whatever is going to happen, it's not going to be an easy say it and then it just happens. Yes, you want to speak it to existence, but, you know, I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. Anything that you put in existence in there, but like I said, it's going to be a very, very hard um it's gonna be very, very hard to 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 come out of Atlanta with a dog. We might win, but are we winning to qualify? That is the question. How are you gonna qualify? Is what um, I'm saying. You know, people are. I've given up already. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm giving our boys more probability that we will make it happen we already have the mickey mouse time to pull out the attack for them <laughs> that's true man that's very true that's very true i mean uh look looking at what we have i mean we have the players we the thing is we have the players so let's look at the team that we have yes our guys are not playing well right now that's why i'm not giving an excuse to anybody we got better players than them what they did last week was executing their tactics to a perfection for them to be able to beat us. Not that they just beat us. We created enough chances to score at least minimum of two goals. So going over there, Liverpool is going to create chances. The question is, will we put them away? Can we keep a clean sheet? We haven't kept a clean sheet since the last Europe again, I guess. Right? So it's like when, when we decide that we want to do something, we can make it happen. As hard as it's going to be, that, that's what makes the whole thing special because you, Liverpool have gone to Real Madrid where they came to Anfield and beat us 5-2. We scored two quick goals. They equalized before the half and then hit us with another three again. We need a three goals. We go to Benabo and we somehow created enough chances where if Sandy Mandem have put the balls into the net or you know eat their dinner well, we would have been coming out with dessert. But that's always the problem. So these players, looking at them on Sunday, how it hit them, how it, you could tell that they were hurt. And this is the thing where I think sometimes they call it quicksand. If you're an athlete and you know what, you know, if you know what a quicksand is, you know that when the more you struggle, the more you sink. And that's where I think they are right now. They're trying their best. They're trying. It's just whatever they're trying, it's not working. Because watching the Sunday game, there's one a couple of times where all one person had to do was just calm down and just give a simple pass. And even that, they could not do that. So to me, that tells me like these guys are they are over eager, over zealous, or whatever you want to call it. Instead of just somebody needs to calm them down and say, just be easy, you will be fine. And that is the problem. And, you know, today I didn't want to make it a, you know, pick on people today. Um, yeah, exactly. MK Talk, cut the mistakes, shoot better, and we are through. I agree with you 1,000%. Key word, the mistakes, that have hurt us all season. We have created more mistakes than some teams have created chances. And that's why it's hurting us. I don't care about the chances that other teams create against us because this is football. This is professional football. People will create chances. The problem is if you're going to play this high risk, high reward game, you have to cut out mistakes. And that's what has been hurting us mistakes. All the 
Sunday is probably one of the best goals that I've seen against Liverpool all season. But if you were to go back, I will guarantee you more than two-thirds of the goals that I have scored against Liverpool have been mistakes. Something that we did it ourselves, whether we were not prepared, we were not focused, somebody was not paying attention, and then opportunity gets, you know, comes to the other team and they eat their dinner. And then that's exactly what happened. So going there on Thursday, we have to eliminate mistakes. Exactly what I'm saying, Hollywood. Exactly what I'm saying. That goal was a very, very beautiful goal. And I, you could even debate that we were part of it because they passed the ball and we just watched them pass the ball and then the ball just went in. You know, that goal was nice. Nothing that Allison can do. And the thing is, like, I want to go back into this quicksand thing a little bit. A lot of time for an athlete, especially for people who play sports in the highest level, when they they are body, you know, when like Manny, let's use Manny for example. Manny had to go to therapy, had to hire, ex, you know, third party trainers and people to kind of see what's going on with him because for that season where he wasn't playing well. He could not figure out why was it because he knew he was giving everything. He's doing his, everything that he usually does since he's been playing football, right? But everything he was doing wasn't working. So he had to ask for outside help. And a lot of it had to do with, you know, psychological fatigue. The body is starting to give up on him. So why would, you know, best thing that was done for him was, okay, and great thing from the management team is, okay, we're going to move you. <laughs> big up to, big up, realist Scouser. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, the best thing that Liverpool also did was what? Move him into the middle. We brought in Diaz to the left. And then we could see a whole different money right there. So sometimes certain players, maybe we may have to move certain players around a little bit, change the tactics a little bit, change formation. And things could change. Because a lot of times when you do something over and over and over and over and over, you get so used to it that when you're making mistakes, you don't know it until somebody tells you that. Was MK to say, I hope the boys got good three days rest. I hope so. No training. They don't need any more training at this point because they are fit. You know, big up yourself, man. Big up yourself. Thank you so much for being here. So a lot of times athletes like that, when they're trying so hard and they're trying so hard, the harder they try, the more they sink in. Hence the reason why it's called um, quick fit. Because they're trying, they're trying to get out of it, they're trying to get out of it, they're trying to get out of it, and it's not, it's not working, you know? Yeah, you know, we, we will give you guys some of the what's going on in the Champions League, because Champions League is going mad right now. Barcelona, man. Exactly. Thank you, Hollywood Rock. So that's where it is right now. So either the manager needs to figure a way to get them out of whatever quicksand they are in by changing some tactics a little bit, changing some, you know, je ne sais quoi, like, like whatever they're doing, just change it. Let's just change it. Let's practice whatever, even change it so that they get a little bit fresh. As a matter of fact, don't let them go practice for, for a whole week, except those who just want to go to the gym and work out or whatever, and then give them something, just new food or anything. And that could spark something. Just like last season, club did the trend, inverted, and then we went on a seven, what, six out of seven games, we were on six and then draw 1-1 one, one with uh, Aston Villa. So I think that it's important that, you know, we we, we give them that, that, that grace saying that, hey, things could change, right? So on the football side, I believe that if certain things – are done properly, we could make it on Thursday. Now, we look at the team. The team is 
It's stuck. I think Bradley is the one that we heard that he's out for about two to three weeks. You know, his injury could have been worse, but we are thankful that it wasn't as bad as it looked, right? Um, I mean, he ended up limping off the field. But um, beside him, everybody's back. Everybody should be working their tail off to be able to do, um, to, you know, to go there on Thursday and say, no, nah, we, 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 we're we going to give it everything that we got. We're going hard on Atlanta and anything can happen. We got the players to do that. We have the players to do that. That's why I believe in my guys. These are a Champions League team. We were one of the teams that said that even though when the, uh, we are in Europa, people were like, Liverpool is one of the teams that can win Champions League. And we are not even in the Champions League. You know? Atlanta came in to Anfield, executed their, whatever they did, and it worked. And so did the Crystal Palace. So now we need something new. And I'm hoping, this is where I'm talking to my manager. I'm hoping that my manager is coming out with different tactics. If you have to, different formation. Surprise us. Surprise the fans. Come out with three in the back, something that he has never done in a long I don't even remember when club has played three in the back. Go back to your 4 2 3 one which you are always successful because if we're looking at formations, how teams are playing us, they pressing us with three attackers. And they're not going wide. They're targeting us right in the middle. So that means our DM is being moved, uh, basically tactical out, like he gone. Um, the two center backs can't hold the ball for too long because the press is coming. And then they do the mid press. So now the midfield is basically, you know, is basically out of whack. So now they have to launch the ball in. He's going to have to play long ball. So now we're just playing long balls. Now, if you have a team like that who basically play one-on-one -on -one or pressing you that high, that means we have to pass and, you know, trap the ball very, very well. None of this when the ball touches your foot, it hits the chin and then, it, I mean, your shin and then it, falls, it goes away. That's the problem. We, couldn't, we can't pass the ball. The press is not, we want him to press us, remember? We want him to press us. But if we are not able to touch the ball or even pass the ball properly, guess what? You're going to get overpressed, and then now, all of a sudden, now you are just in a hurry, just kick the ball around. You can't even trap the ball. Simple passes are not even working anymore. So I think that that's why the quicksand thing comes in. Nothing that is being shown to us, we've never seen it before. Yes. The new tactics that people are playing us is a little bit different, but our guys are good enough to be able to deal with that kind of pressure. And the fact that two games back to back, the same tactics was used on us and we had no answers. I'm not expecting to see the same thing on Thursday, uh, on Thursday because they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do the same thing. Um, teams that who are we playing next? Fulham. Fulham is going to do exactly the same thing, and Fulham has always been giving us problems. So we guys have to be focused, pass the ball quicker, move the ball around, you know, pass and go, pass and go, pass and go has to be quick. We need to stop this ball to Virgil, ball to Konate. Konate to Virgil, Virgil to Konate. And then it goes to the goalie, and then it goes to the side, and then it comes back around, and they recycle back to the same two guys again. It has to stop. And the, most of the time, the reason why they, is, he keeps doing that is because the guys in the midfield can't pass. You pass the ball in the midfield, we lose the ball, the ball, we get hit with a counterattack. So that has to stop. That's why we are struggling, right? What are people saying? So, yeah, Mbappe balling. He was struggling. Uh, I'm worried about Trent inverting now. He got... Close down twice versus Palace. Exactly. I agree with you. I see this one. Well, we played against Manchester United. They use the same tactics by pressing our two center backs so we can pass the ball right there, right? 
So we moved Joey into the midfield to invert, and then we had an extra man in midfield so we could pass the ball. If Trent can hold the ball, then you beat that press. As soon as you beat that press, the next person who gets the ball, the midfield is wide open. The problem against Palace is when we beat the press and the next person gets the ball, they lose it. And then we are get, we hit with a Genga press. So that was the problem. But if we're going to beat the press, that means the passes have to be crisp. That means our ball, not the ball movement. The man movement without the ball has to be very, very quick because then they press in one way. You would switch it again. That means we have to be switching. Virgil needs to switch the ball a little bit more better than just keep moving the ball back to back, back to back, back to back. Our midfields also needs to control the ball much, much better. Uh, if the boys are tired, they won't be able to turn and jump. I mean, this is the thing. Why are you tired? Everybody's tired. This is a, a end games, man. Why are you tired? Everybody is tired. Sometimes when you're tired, you have to play smart, not just to work way too hard. You know? Play, play smart. The other team is also tired, so make it hard on them. The boys haven't had energy to press in the last three games. True. I'm, I mean, our problem is not even the press anymore. Because when we get the ball, right, in the last three games, when we get the ball, we can control the ball. So the other team now has to come after us. The problem is we are not holding the ball long enough for the other team to get tired. Because when the other team is tired, trust me, they're not pressing. We are not holding the ball well. We're losing the ball way too frequently in too many dangerous places. So now when we lose the ball, now we have to go on attack, try to get the ball back right away. And we keep going back and forth, back and forth. And that's why we look so disjointed. Like I said, they bring in the press. For you to be the press, you have to be able to control the ball. You don't want the ball to hit you in a shin guard and then the ball just leave. And that, that's also another one. There's three problems with Liverpool right now. MK2, there's three. One is we know scoring. You're right. Two, we make no no. I thought let me let, let me go back. One is we're making too many mistakes. And the mistakes could be on the final third end and the uh and the uh defensive end, right? Number two, we're not scoring, we're not scoring all our chances. You see what I mean? We're making too many mistakes. We're not scoring our chances. If you're going to make mistakes, score your goals. Because when you score more goals, the other team eventually is going to give up with all the chances that we created. And that is the one of the problems, right? We're creating way too much mistakes, way too much um, uh, losing the ball, uh, not scoring enough goals. And three, not be able to control the ball. All well, then the other team basically has us on, on, on toast. And against Palace, that was the problem. When after they scored the goal, they looked tired eventually. So what did they do? They went back and just stayed calm. And one thing that I want to big up Palace is they were very calm. The same thing with Atlanta. They were very, very calm. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just... Keep the, keep the fans quiet. Keep the fans quiet. Keep the fans quiet. And that's all they did. Remember, they didn't have more possession than us, but they got way too more possession than usual. Right? They got way too more possession than usual. So that's also the problem. And that's because we were not, we were not uh, scoring or holding the ball a little bit too long. And the thing is, Palace had two of, the, you know, their best players were there. But the crazy thing is this one thing also is we did not, they did not hit us on the wings. They were coming straight through the middle. Same thing with Atlanta. So 
going to Atlanta, we just have to club has to pick the right players. I think Gagpo needs to start. I think Elliot needs to start. Um, I will bench Salah. No agenda. I will bench Salah because Sunday's game is more important, right? I mean, both games are important, but I will bench Salah and give Jota a running chance because we need Jota to start playing and get back into rhythm. Um, will I start Darwin? No, I won't start Darwin. I won't start Darwin. I will start Gakpo, put um, Jota through the middle, and put Diaz on the other side. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. What do you guys think? What would be the front three that you guys would want to see? What would be the front three that you guys want to see? Because with me, I will I will rather have Salah come off the bench and start. Let's just see because a couple of times that Salah has come off the bench, he has been a very good impact player where boom, he, he either gives an assist or he scores a goal, which is what we need. So last Sunday, we needed something like that. And we thought Jota had it. Gakpo played well, but he was too far away from the goal. So I don't remember him making it, having any chance. Um, I will, yeah, that's why I, right now I will start Salah off the bench. And then on Sunday, bring it on starter. Um, I think the front three, and Diaz should not play full 90 minutes tomorrow. That's what I think. Uh, what did, let's see what the people are saying. Realism, Jerry, big up yourself, man. Thank you for coming. The opposition are happy for us to have possession. They know we will give it to them. We don't know how to keep the ball for an excessive period of time. That's how start. I don't know. There's, it's crazy because we have players who can touch, who, could, who are more skilled than the old club 1.0 team that he had. And the funny thing is, you know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, MK to say correct, Jared. That's true, man. You you will hit the nail on the head right there. Uh, Diaz on the right is better because he can pass into the box. I agree. I totally agree. That's what I would do. I, I the front three to my on Thursday for me it should be Gakpo on the left, Jota through the middle, and then Diaz on the right. That's what I would start. Um, that that will be the formation for me. As a matter of fact, let's see what we can do. Let me share my screen. Exactly. Dota Gakpo Diaz. That will be my. That will be my. Um. That will be. That will be my front three. I would like to know what every, everybody else's front three will be like. So if you have your front three, please put it out there. Um, the midfield, I think, um, yeah, McAllister has to play. McAllister has to play. And um, I think Curtis, not Curtis, I won't start Curtis. I will start Curtis. I'll have Curtis come off the bench. I will have Curtis come off the bench, you know? So this will be my lineup. I mean, let's do, let's do, let's do it together, guys. Um, so Allison will start VVD. Will you start Konate or will you start Kwanzaa? That's the question. I want people in the chat to tell me. So I did say that I would rather substitute um. Salah. So for me, we substitute Salah, put, let's put Jota there. Let's substitute him. And we will bring Gakpo, right? So we just have to move players around. Jota through the middle. And then Gakpo on the left. This will be my front three. What do you guys think about your... Um, Yo, what do you guys think? I'm good. what are you saying? Be prepared for club to make us sigh when we hear the line. 
<laughs> have faith in your manager, man. Have faith in your manager. Uh, pressure to win makes players look crack. Hey, some, you know, pressure makes diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds. So we need to know who is the diamond in our team. Um, I did put Kwanzaa this time. Okay. So you want to put Kwanzaa. I think so too. We need Konate for the um for the Premier League. This is why, yep, I agree. Bradley is injured. So I think Trent needs to play because he need he, he needs uh game time. We need Trent to have game time. I will what do you think about Robertson? I say it's Simicas. I say Simicas needs to have some playing time. He needs game time. We can't keep sitting him on the bench and then expect him to come off and then do something. You know what I mean? We cannot allow that. So Okay, Kwanzaa because he can dribble into the box. Okay, I see you. Realism is giving us a shout on the Champions League was happening. What are you saying, Amiketo? Robertson's been good. No, Robertson's been good, but I don't want him to burn out. I need him for Sunday. I need Robertson, and he's been picking up. Um, he's been picking up a lot of injuries lately. So I'm just taking the precaution side, and I'm I want Simicas or, or Gomez to play because Sunday, Sunday, like I said, Sunday we can't drop any points. We need to take our best players to um to, to in Latin to Fulham or the cottage cottage road and you know play them. That's why I'm putting um Simicas on there. Okay, the midfield. Let's work on the midfield, people. Help me out here. What do you think we should do? I I don't think he should play. He should start off the bench. I will bring in Elliot. I will move it around right here. But there's one more player that I think should not be on the list. I think there's one more player that should not be on the midfield. And I, I want to know if everybody, what people are saying. Uh, so, I'll put Mark, I'll put Mark Gomez and Sobosla Elliot. Okay. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Bring um, Gomez into the DM. Okay, let's see how it looks like. Because I think Endo needs some rest. He should be playing on Sunday. Should I see what you see? I mean, I'm, I'm, let's, let's, what do you guys think about this, people? Thumbs up for this or nah? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? The problem is we are being pressed right here. Gomez, is he really a press-resistant player? Can he control there when those two guys come at him? I want to hear what you guys are saying. Uh, what are you saying, Mike? You said, so just grab and budget tech. Hmm. This game is way too important. A budget tech just came out of injury. I uh, don't want to risk it. He can have some, some, some game time. Maybe get like 10, 15 minutes in the match. But, man, I was thinking about that, bro. I was thinking about that. Oh, my goodness. You know, you know them people going to lose their mind if that were to happen. Uh, people, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Uh, appreciate you all. Yeah, so, I mean, what are you guys thinking about the midfield, though? You all think it should be Gomez? I, I, this is what I think. I know I'm going to get cooked for this, but this is what I'm, if uh, I would do. I will bring this gentleman here. Bring him here, and I have Elliot here, and I have this. This will be my midfield tomorrow. What do you guys think? 
What do you guys say? Is it a thumbs down? Is it man? This is too scary. Is it too risky? Somebody, please give me. I mean, what do you guys think? I want to see what you guys think about this this lineup. That 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 that's what I'm worried about. Right? These guys know how to play ball. You can't put Gomez into the DM. This guy said, Mike, MK told say Mike in DM is sad. Why do you think it's sad? He's been balling at any position we put him in the midfield. So why not? Like I said, we get pressed every single time in that area. If you're going to be pressed in that, in that side, you need somebody who is press resistant to be able to, you know, get away from the press. That's why I'm putting Maka over there. That means they will have to foul him before they get the ball. If you try to put Trent there, unless, unless this is where we go, another formation that I think maybe Klopp can do, right? So unless Klopp decided to put him and him there, right? And then you bring this guy right here. Gapo gets his stays there. And then I will sub him because I, Elliot has been deserved a start. Then I'll bring him right here. And then Elliot right here. What do you guys think about that? I, I mean, at the beginning of the show, what was I saying? We are in a quicksand. We're doing the same thing over and over and over, and it's not working. So we need something new, different formation, different tactics, something different, something new, right? What do you guys think about that? Let me see how it looks. What do you guys think about this one? You see what I mean? Now you have creativity right down the middle. This looks better. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, this guy said grab at six. Nah, I'm not going to scan. Mm, I mean, this formation, right? Realism, check this out. You said grab at six or Jones at six, and you're fine with it. With a double pivot, we can put Jones or Gravenberg in a double pivot, right? Because check this out. If we, you know, Trent or whoever it is, right? So let's just say we take Trent out and you bring, what's his name? Jones, right? You move him around because we know Jones likes to play on this side. And then McAllister is right here, right? This one is much better, much, much better. That is create. This is three players who are press resistant, right? This guy being the main one, and he's very, very capable of breaking through a press. And, of course, we know he's calm, cool, calm, collected. He can hold the ball very well. And then some of you guys say Kwanzaa could also do the same thing. Now when the press is coming, bring it. You have to follow me to get the ball. Right? Um, even him, if we were to take him out, guess what? Him, right there. You see what I mean? Him too. He can turn with the ball. He can hold the ball. He can do exactly the same thing all three of them can do. Right? I think this is much, much better than going three and trying to put one of them in the middle. Right, we could do this, or we could bring Trent in there, we could bring Jones in there, you know, that allow Elliot to be able to do what Elliot needs to do right here because Gapo will be the one running the channels. He's not gonna be running because we know he has no speed on this side. And this side, we could even bring um if Trent were to play, we could even bring Trent in and Trent will be on this side, then we go back to old school Trent. 
then instead of Elliot bombing here, here, and there, no, he would, no, he would tack in a little bit more, right? So that he and Sobos like also help. And then Trent will be doing his thing, going here. Right? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We need something. Yeah, create, you know. What you say, creativity isn't the issue. We make chances we don't score them. Like I said, we, me, MK Kato and I were talking about it. That's one of our problems. Number one being we make too much mistakes. Number two, we don't score the chances that we create. And three, we can hold the ball. So that's the problem. I don't even think Klopp will play Graf. Regardless of who he plays, he has to make sure that he put them in a position where they're going to succeed. If he doesn't, then he's going to be doing it over and over and over and over and over, expecting something different. That's what has happened to us since we played Manchester United, since we played Atlanta, and since we played um, Crystal Palace. It's the same formation, same tactics, and we don't change it. All we're doing is just changing the personnel, right? We're just changing the personnel, and it's not working. So we need something new. And at this point, it has to be tactics because the players are good enough. Even if we um, we don't start uh, setting players, the players coming off the bench are still very good enough. So it has to do with tactics. It has to do with tactics. The club not doing that, let's be real. He has the mo at most eight games. He said club ain't, chain ain't changing formation. Bro, yeah, everybody, I mean, people, nobody has faith in the manager saying that he's not going to change. Let's see, man. Let's see, because if he wants us to win, he has to change something, and it has nothing to do with the players. Right now, we have all the players that we've been begging for everybody to come back, right? Um, I agree with the new tactics, but it's three days enough. These guys are good. They're good. They're good. They are good. They are professional. They've been doing this all. It's okay. Let me ask you this. Why is it that a manager can show up and all of a sudden we have that so-called manager bounce and he changed the tactics and everything seems to go well, right? It's the same thing. He just has to change certain things to make it comfortable for certain players. Remember, he himself just said he's part of Gakpo not playing well because he's been playing in positions that it's not helping him. So, play him in positions that they will do well. That's the problem. Atalanta played yesterday and lost a two-goal lead. Yeah, I saw it, man. And it's very annoying that we could not be We could not even lay a glove for them. How? Look what uh, Burnley did to Manchester United. You see, so it's 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 not at this point. We all have to look at the manager. We all have to look at the manager. Yes, the players are the ones who play, but we all have to look at the manager. Whatever you've been doing has been found out. Change the same way last season. Whatever towards the, the last ten games, he made some changes, and we went on a seven six straight game winning streak. Right, so. He has to do the same thing again. If you don't, then you can't expect us to do anything. And then don't, you know, I mean, I've seen the comments that he's been making about we don't deserve this. This one was this. This one was that. Bro, it's definition of insanity. So that's why I believe. So um, I understand that some people will be like, oh, no. You know, Klopp won't change anything. Well, if he wants to win, he has to change. He's, yeah. If he has to win, he has to change. Wow. Talking about revenge, huh? <laughs> Football is so cruel, man. It's a humbler. So what do you guys think? Do you guys still feel like we can do it? After I've given you guys all my pep talk, or oh, you guys still say like there's no hope. 
So you guys still think that there's no hope? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Now, well, let's see what the man them is talking about in the spaces. Sunday, we play Fulham. We roll in there. We say the chance is there until 90 minutes are done. <laughs> Facts. That's what I'm saying. The chances are there. We just have to, the manager has to be part of this. I mean, against Barcelona, he just kept it simple and told them, just go play your game. And they came out like, you know, so we have to, he has to do it again. He has to do it again. We can't afford to um, to go back doing the same thing over and over. <laughs> Hollywood Rock say Barcelona got circumcised. Man. It, yeah, that red card hurt them, though. That red card hurt them. But, hey, that's part of the game, man. Yep, Liverpool needs to do the same thing. We need to roll up in uh, Atlanta and circumcise them. That's what Liverpool needs to do. It'll hurt if we get eliminated on Thursday. And I know a lot of the English teams are, are hoping that we – some of them want us to win because then fifth spot becomes open. Right, if we lose and we get bust out of the Europa, people in the fifth spot can't go anymore. What's going on in uh Germany? Dortmund are true. What I kept saying that um, Atletico is my dark horse. I felt like they could have done something, you know, if they go further, they are the team that could hurt anybody in the in the, uh, in the rest of the Champions League. And Dutchman just bounced him up. Just like um, my man said, imagine if Sancho wins the UCL with that. Woo, them spaces would be crazy. He said, if only we could sign Mbappe. Don't worry, Mbappe is coming. Mbappe is coming. You know, he's coming. He's coming. Don't worry. He's coming. I've been campaigning. I campaign for club to come to Liverpool. It took a while, but he ended up showing up. So don't worry, Mbappe might show up. MK2, why are you laughing, man? Stop laughing. Um, Real Madrid carrying Spanish hope now. That's true. Oh, two of them are out. Two of them are out. He comes to the barbershop all the time, bro. He comes to the barbershop all the time. I'll be hitting him up with them fates. No diddy. Hey, Ganga D, why are you saying, bro? What do you mean, my dream? You guys, one of these days, you guys are going to pay me a lot of money with all my, my predictions. I'm telling you. <laughs> he said, let's try to keep a clean sheet in the first 45 minutes and try to score one. All we need is score a goal in the first five to 10 minutes and the whole title changes. That's all we need to do, realism. Uh, is the Cancelo doing Cancelo? Oh, Cancelo doing Cancelo teams. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Oh, uh, fans, we want Mbappe. FSG, we have Mbappe at home. Kai Garden. <laughs> yes, sir. Just give him time. You know, he's been coming through some injuries, so he would need time to um, to heal up. Uh, imagine both City and Arsenal lose tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Why are you jinxing the English teams? But tomorrow, Madrid is going to be a problem for City. City is also a problem, but Madrid is not over. Arsenal is the one that I'm very... I think they're going to have a very, very... Um, a lot of problems dealing with buying at the Alliance. Alliance, playing at Alliance is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, I mean, the, whew, the same thing can happen to England, to, to the English team tomorrow. Exactly what just happened to the, look at the Barcelona fans crying. Um, 
The same thing can happen to the English team. Literally two of them are gone. Hmm, I totally, totally forget about that. Uh, what are we saying? What are we say about Hope? Post club, new manager, coaching staff, CEO, and sporting director. We can be a serious club. You know what? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. We need a change. I've been saying we need a change for a long time. It's not just, and change is coming, right? But before the season ends, we need a change. Otherwise, we can't do the same thing and think that we're going to end up winning the league or, you know, go through to on Thursday. But I know I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, Gangadi. I, I think that's what we need. That's what we need because you see the mistakes that the players are doing during the game. A new manager is going gonna, is gonna to kick it out at training because some – they say play, you know, train as you will play in the game. So there's certain things that they've been accustomed to that they've been doing and over and over and over that during training, somebody is not talking to some people. And it would take a new person to roll in there and say, bro, you can't do that anymore. Virgil, I need you to be a little bit upbeat. Trent, you can't just run over there and think that you're not going to have to come back. You know, all these things that we've done, you know, the nonchalance, mentality that we have and think that we could always switch switch the you know the the the, the light on or whatever we want we we can't do that you know so that's what i think moving forward it's gonna happen and that's why it's exciting at the same time i can see why some people are anxious because they're like people are so comfortable and used to what they know when something new comes in it worries them a little bit so that, that that's needed whether the, they're going to be good or bad whatever is coming they have to make a change and the players that are going to be at liverpool when the new manager comes in they can keep doing the same thing that they were doing when Klopp is here because you're going to end up being on the bench or you might not even get a chance to suit up so you know i, I think it's that's why change is good sometimes you know change is good but that's a very very point right here now Will we be serious club? We will see. The owners went back and got uh, Michael Edwards because of what he did before he when he left the club. They hired a new guy. I'll try two new guys. Actually, it's going to be three, you know, if you add the manager. But they hired a new director of football, and then they hired a new uh, technical director. Now you have to hire the manager who's also going to bring his backroom staff. Also, there are some technical positions that they're also going to hire new places, you know, like the trainers and uh, uh, fitness coordinators, you know, those type of people. So the whole backroom staff is going to be brand new. That means new mindset, new goals, right? A new bosses, a new guy is coming. So he will set things up where he wants it to be done. So let's see, man. The serious, the serious part, it has to do with did the owners have ambition enough to let Edwards run the club the way he wanted to run before he left? That is going to be the answer to the serious club right there. Uh, what you say, Mbappe will be at Anfield. His mom will be there to watch. <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you, he will be there. He will be there. Don't go anywhere when he shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, I can only hope. This guy said I can only hope. We don't. Coach, final third. Hope that changes. I mean, at this point, man, the way amount of chances that we create and amount of chances that we 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 we, we miss. The funny thing is, we will get so many five on twos. We create these five on twos so many times, and then we can't even end up doing anything with it. That is the frustrating part. So, whoever the new manager is, we want to see something uh, something different. You know. And the crazy thing also is people need to realize the new manager is not going to have the whole squad with him at preseason. Let me say it again. The new manager is not going to have the entire squad with him mostly for the entire preseason. They'll be like, why you say that? 
Do you guys know how many tournaments are going on in this summer? All our players are in it. So the further their respective country goes into the tournament, they will have to take a longer break. And remember, these tournaments usually ends in July, and then we got the Olympics right afterwards. So I'm also kind of worried about that part too, where a lot of our players are going to be on international level, international uh, competition, and when they're done, they have to take a break. By the time they come back, we are already in the mid of the uh, preseason because preseason starts in mid July, right after Euro. I think a couple of days after Euro, preseason starts. So, and then you also have the Concacaf, who's also playing, and it's gonna. I think Concacaf and Euro probably gonna be. I think a week or two off between them two. And right after that, you got the Olympics. So there's a lot of tournaments going on, and the new manager will not have most of his squad with him, which it's annoying me because we need our manager to have the entire squad with him for preseason so that he knows, everybody should know what to, uh, what to expect moving forward or when they come back. Uh, what you say? I say, I hate to say this as P Club is one of my favorite managers, but I think some section of LFC fans have over him thoughts. Man, that's a loaded, 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 loaded question. Okay. Can we remove the word overrated if I think putting overrated and club in the same sentence, it's a little bit disingenuous. And I'll tell you why. He is a great manager. He is a great coach, right? We can't deny everything he done where, when he came where we were to where we are now. That's why I'm saying we cannot put the over, overrated with him and his name together. No. Now, I understand why people tends to bring that word because of the amount of trophies he's won. But let's be real. The man won it. Every trophy that needed to be won. We are the most successful and most decorated club in England right now. So there's now, I will say this. There have been some overzealous Fans who have said things that you'd be like, bro, nah, 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 nah. And that just because he makes, you know, he Klopp is a person that is a very emotional person. So he hit those type of fans in the emotional level. So a lot of time, their praise can go a little bit over the board, right? So that's what I'm saying. We don't want to put overrated and Klopp's name in the same sentence the job that he has done he has he has fulfilled everything that he was supposed to do now should he do have done more and got more trophies that is where some of his tactics some of his decision let him down you see what i mean that's where the tactics and some decisions like actually not tactics, like some decisions that he club made let him down. Other than that, he came in and he became the one number two, one, he was one and two since he's been here. You see what I'm saying? He's been one and two since he's been here. So over that's not an overrated manager. Now, if you said are we overrated him over Pep? Now nah, that's a different conversation. Now I got you because then <laughs> Pep is going to show up with all his all his uh, accolades, and then you're going to tell uh, Klopp what you got one 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 one. I got two 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 three 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 and one. You see what I mean? So um, okay, so you say by overrated when fans put his conversation with Pep, Mourinho, Wenger, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But um, he, he sits on that table with them, though. And if you listen to those managers, they will tell you that. He sits on the table with them. But there's levels. 
right? There's levels of me and you sitting at the same table. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, right? It sits on the table. Ancelotti sits on the table. Arsenal Wenger sits on the table, but Arsenal Wenger did not win the Champions League. He was there for 20 some years. You see what I mean? A lot of people want to give Arsenal Wenger a lot of credit for what he did for the English League, but they don't want to do the same thing for Klopp because Klopp has done exactly almost identical. You will not know it until when club moves on. And then some fans, some rival fans will start be like, oh, well, the reason why we have this is because of club. Because of the, 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 the. same thing happened to Wenger. People didn't start giving Wenger his, his kudos until towards his latter stages. When he wasn't a threat to mind you anymore. Then they were like, oh, we have to give credit to Arsenal Wenger because he changed the, the fitness and the health side of uh, English football. That's what I'm saying. Klopp came in. He is the one who said, we need a break. Eventually, Asnavenga, Alex Ferguson, were here. they also fought for it, but they never were able to get it done until Klopp came in and he whined and whined and whined and whined, and then eventually they gave them the break. The five subs rule, after the, uh, after the COVID break, they were going back to three. Klopp is the same person said, no. We have to do this. And then eventually they change it back. I'm not saying he is the sole reason, but I'm just saying the person who started the conversation, the very, very uncomfortable conversation for the certain things to change in the league was club. Some of us and some you know, even Liverpool fan base were calling him. He whines too much. He complains too much. Blah, 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 blah. Eventually, guess what? They're doing that. You see what I mean? There's an, uh, I told you guys, there's an article on ESPN. Go check it out. When it tells you what Klopp and Pep have done for the English team. I mean, the English league. Top to bottom. More passes. More pressing. Control. All these things that we, you see at Liverpool, now you look at the league and things are changing. Passing from the back. Look at the defense, how defenders are set up right now. There's a there's a there's a club, there's a Virgil type, and then there's a Matip or Konate type. It's not back in the day where you have the all of them rough, rough, rough defenders who just will beat you down. Now look at how center backs are now playing now. Saliba, Gabriel, that's identical to uh, Virgil and Matip or Virgil Konate or Virgil or Gomez. You see what I mean? Now if you go pound for pound for then, you know, of course, his accolades will not stand against Pep. He won't stand against Ancelotti. He won't stand against even Mourinho. But Klopp has shown that I can do more with less. Mourinho could not do that. He did it one time with, uh, maybe two times with um, Porto. Every team he went and he succeeded, had money. But when he left those teams and go to teams that were, don't even have that kind of cash as the other previous team, Mourinho was struggling. He got fired at the Spurs. Roma. You see what I mean? So I understand, yes, sometimes some fans go over the board because that's their manager. He makes them feel great. But there's more to it than just say, oh, you overrated. Oh, you didn't win enough. Oh, you didn't do that. When you have Mourinho, when you have Asna Wenger, say Alex Ferguson, talk about you in glowing terms. You have to know that you're doing something right. You see what I mean? So I agree with you. I mean, there's levels to this. And uh, MKT said, you have to consider the, yep, you have to consider the budget. He's not overrated. You have to consider it. And as much as I don't like to people to say, oh, Pep is successful because he got money. I don't believe in that. If you have money, you better be successful. There's a whole different kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Um, what's the manager from Brighton who went to Chelsea? Great manager where he was. He goes to a place where there's a lot more money, different kind of pressure, and what happens to him? Right? So that's what I'm saying. Uh, what do you say? <laughs> Realism. So, Kwesi, what you saying is FSG should start club today. Okay, the new manager is now, so he can start the preseason immediately. 
Bro, why are you trying to get me in trouble, man? Klopp needs to get his his goodbye talk, get his party, and leave. I'm just saying that Klopp left at the wrong time. He he he. Uh, elite manager should come with elite manager expectation. Of course, Klopp is in crap. I think he could have won way more. So I'll ask you this. What's the difference between Virgil and um, Sergio Ramos? Both great defenders, but it's the temperament. That's the difference between Klopp and some of these managers. Klopp, the way Klopp is, his, tem his temperament is just like Virgil. Nonchalant, chill, football is in their mind all the time, but it's not the most important thing in their head. So you guys, what you guys want is you are tired of the, the, the emotional side of managers. You want somebody who is straight down business. So I have a, I have a name for you guys. I think Benitez should come back to Liverpool. Because he and me have watched Liverpool since the Dutch day. Trust us, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am very grateful for him. I'm not saying everything he did is right. Trust me, I've criticized him. I campaigned for him to come in and I've criticized him and sometimes makes me look like I want him out. But undoubtedly what he has done, remember it took us 30 years to get where to win the league. We, maybe we should have won it sooner. Benitez, um, Rogers, and even Klopp. But you just have to appreciate what he did. And yes, I'm going to emphasize this again. Some of our fan base went overboard with the praise. But some of you guys are saying we need seriousness. We need that, 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 that assassin type of, you know, that Kobe ment Mamba mentality type of uh, manager. I think we got Benitez. Benitez, I feel like Benitez has an unfinished business at Liverpool. He was done dirty by the old owners. They did him dirty. He is a, the man is a genius when it comes to foot, uh, football. So I'm like, oh my God, let me tell you, do you guys know he's the only manager in La Liga to win? Back to back with Valencia. Simone is not the first one. Because Simone is the more modern one. So everybody remembers Simone. But when Galacticos was around and Barcelona was also at, at their peak, not the Messi peak, but they were also at their peak, Valencia was balling in and out with less money. So I'm just saying, what do you guys think about that? Uh, pound for pound, he's elite with what he has won with the clubs and he has won it with he doesn't have the mentality to be the serial. I get that. He is he's a he's a homeboy, he's a chill guy. You see what I mean? I get that. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Benitez. Gerard spent all his years trying to impress this guy, and this guy's like, bro, keep playing. That's what I want to know. Pep Ancelotti and Mourinho were backed by big money. Facts. Uh Wenga, invisible titles and two. Doubles plus in his first seven years at the club, only stain is true. Remember, Pep, as much as we praise Pep, club won a champions, went to, has gone to champion, more Champions League finals when since they both been in England. Pep has been there twice, 1 1. Club has been there 3 1. Yeah, the record is, doesn't sound good, but club still won it before Pep with all the money and how great, great Pep is. So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, Benga, first 10 years, bar none. And then afterwards, you guys know what happened. Benga is a legend. I totally agree. Yep. Uh, big up to Dustin. People don't understand what Club did. Uh, same thing. A identical. Identical. What what Pep, uh, Club did for Dortmund is what of, uh, Benita did for Valencia. Back to back. League club went to the uh, Champions League final with Dortmund, and they have. If you guys know the story of Dortmund, they were bankrupt. It was so bad that Bayern had to give them money to get out of 
bankrupt. Otherwise, they would have been liquidated. They would be done. Uh, yeah, club is in the pep. Peggy, Jose, Wenger, Congo in terms of Prem. Nope, he's on the same tier, but there's levels in those tiers. <laughs> because let me say this, Alex Ferguson was there 20 plus years. He won two Champions League. I'll just leave it at that. Mind, yep. Uh, Graham Porter, there, that was the guy I was talking about. Uh, yep. Uh, who is this? He said uh, 15, 16, 8, 16, 17, 4, 17, 18, 4, 18, 19, 2nd, UCL winner. Yeah, club. I mean, the man, he has athletes. It's just that it's not as many as people want with their special, how good he is. I agree. Alonso already has 50% of club bodies league titles and one third of his titles overall. If that's how you look at it, then hey, I can't force you. But if Alonso next year get fired, I want you to come back with the same energy. But Alonso has done very well in Germany for breaking that 11 year who do that buying hat. People don't understand how hard it is. That's why I praise him so much. The only thing my concern with Alonso is we don't know when things go bad, how he reacts. That's my only concern. When something go bad for Pep, everybody knows how he reacts. Same thing with Klopp, Ancelotti, and all these managers. And even Amorin, because he's been there longer. And somebody told me, Alonso might end up being just like Pep, where everything is just smooth sailing. Even when something bad happens, it's not that big of a deal. But Big up to Alonso, man. <laughs> he broke that voodoo. Uh, Klopp himself admits he's not the he's not a sinner like that. I prefer relationship over trophies. <laughs> like the last one. That people, I need to watch. I know people will be say that in spaces, but I need to watch the actual interview to get where he was going with this. People, oh my god, can deal with fans sometimes. Um. <laughs> Benita isn't as elite as he once was. True. I agree. I agree. But the guy got played, man. He's a he's a professional. You know, he's the only manager that Liverpool fans don't care even when he went to Everton. And he did better than Ancelotti, didn't he? With less money, didn't he? He went to Chelsea, came in third and won Europa with them, didn't he? He saved, um, what's the name? New, he took, Newcastle went to relegation. He stayed with them and came, brought them back, didn't he? I'm out here rhyming. Put some respect in Benitez's name. The people don't respect him. He is a very, very good manager. He is the reason why Mourinho never won a Champions League with Chelsea. Mm -hmm. R-E-S-P-K. Respect, my man. Club basically is telling, hey. Be respectful, Stefano. Big up to yourself, man. I'm ready for a clean sheet again. <laughs> I think it's better not touch a manager who has managed everything. <laughs> what about Ancelotti then, MK Talk? He's a Madrid won Champions League. Respect. Uh, club underachieved for the team we had between 2018. Uh, we should have won way more. Why didn't we win more, way more? Don't say he should have spent more money because who does he buy? The team that he had was <laughs> almost perfect for the system that he set up. The players that you're going to get, they have to sit on the bench. Remember, he went two years or two, three years without using the same 12 or 13 players every single game. No injuries. I'm telling you, sometimes people, <laughs> there was... You when you people say that, and then you turn around and say Pep is also a is better manager. So are you disrespecting Pep or you are this club? Because club is good, he had a great team, but yet the manager that you guys say is better than him also had a great team. So how is that underachieving? Simone never won back to back. 
Thank you, Ganga Deep. At least you are on the same level with me when we talk about that. He never did. He won it twice, but it was one, and then years later, then he won it again. Benitez did it back to back when Madrid had the Galacticos. Ah, he's not done yet, man. I'm telling you, when things go back with Liverpool, he will be the one who's good. They got to break it. But I agree, he's not at where he will used to be because we haven't seen him. Like he's been dealing with lesser clubs, so it's very hard for that. Um, I think Benita is probably outdated. Jeez, people are ruthless. 2005 people. Please expand on what he did at BBB if you don't mind. Well, what, like I said, I tried to expand it. If you know what bad, bad Dortmund was, it was, it, it was way worse than Liverpool, for sure. In terms of finance and football, it was bad. Remember, he was there for a long time. He was there for seven years. It took him, what, two, three years to start making that noise where everybody started looking at him. And I know people will be like, well, Alonso just went there 18 months and then he went the league. Hey, so did uh, Riarini, did with Leicester. Leicester, the year before, almost got relegated. And then the next year, five, how could I have been the United States president rather than Leicester winning the league? And see what happened? I'm not saying he's lucky. When it comes to the league, it's not luck. But I'm just saying. Also, Rafa did, didn't go back to, he won the title. True. Stefano Rafa was great though, but like Jose, yeah, that, that's the same thing, you know. That's the same thing because Rafa, if Rafa had the money that FSG had right now back then, oh, oh, oh my goodness. Because Rafa always have a, a, a good 11, but the bench was never good enough to be at the same level. You had Stephen G, you had Alonso, and you have Mascherano, who was coming from the bench. That was the problem. Club did Shakiri. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, Kenny came back and he definitely looked outdated. Yeah, I think he came back at the right time. What we should have done was the following year. I mean, it's like Stephen G going to Aston Villa. It was the right time at the same time, was it though? You know, Kenny came to back to Liverpool. We were in a dump. You know, he brought the LFC, you know, love and back. The following year. I, uh, now we could say he should have never been given the job the year after. We should have let somebody else take it and thank you for your job. But we gave him the contract because everybody thought that was the right thing to do. Pick up yourself, K Mac. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming through. And yes, he is a great servant. That man and his family, man, we can't thank them enough. They have done so well for Liverpool. So, I mean, it was right that we, 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 you know, gave him. And it didn't work. So we moved on. We brought in Brandon Rogers. So with Rafa, yeah, I agree with you guys. He, you know, at this point, maybe his, his football style will not fit, especially right after club. Might not fit for Liverpool. But I still believe the man has an unfinished business with Liverpool. And People should put respect in his name because this guy was a problem when he came to England. He gave Mourinho, Alex Ferguson, Wenger a lot of headache. A lot, a lot, a lot of headache. And in Europe, he was one of the best managers when it comes to tournament. Like, look what Champions League. Like, you guys, how we beat Madrid at Bernabeu and then they came to Anfield. How Torres turned kind of viral. I mean, the way, you know, everybody talks about 2005 only what happened in the final. But if you only know the story, Olympiacos beating Juve, I think Bayern. I mean, the story that year, that 2004, 2005 year, the story alone is, is, is beautiful. It's not just the champ winning the, uh, the Champions League trophy. That was just the icing on the cake. But yeah, things were so bad. 
I mean, you guys remember this guy? No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, what was he saying? Traore. Yeah. All right. I'm telling you, man. So Benitez, you know, he had his time, but moving forward, we need a manager who I think is is new, modern. And the good thing about Liverpool now is we have the structure. So when a new manager comes in, the transition period will not be too rough for them. If they fail, then yeah, move on and bring somebody on quick because the structure is there, you know, uh, from Michael Edwards all the way down to the technical director. So we just need a new modern manager, a young, fresh with new ideas. That's what the Liverpool needs right now. Club has been a great servant to the to the to the to the club. And maybe he is our Shankly, and the next manager will be our Bob Persley. Maybe that's how it is, because sometimes certain managers are there to start the journey, and then the other one continues the journey, and then the other one finishes the journey. Um, so that's how it is. So we just have to give him kudos. He should have won more for sure, but if you say Pep is the best manager in the world, then don't disrespect Pep by saying Klopp should have won more because they were both always competing against each other every single time. And they were the only two. They have changed football. I'm telling you, find that article on ESPN FC and read it. And you, it will make sense to you say like, wow, he's right. The English league, since Pep and Klopp has been there, how many times do you see people playing long balls? The old school uh, Allardyce style of play. Look at how Sean Dice is struggling right now. Even him, he had to adapt. He's playing better football than when he was at um, Burnley. Yeah, man. Uh, Rather than say, imagine Rafa will tell Trent, you are a right back, you stay there, or you are on the bench. Trent would have been a midfielder. Rafa was there, Trent would have been a midfielder. He will not be playing right back. Remember, Trent became a right back because we were desperate. <laughs> Client got injured. And Klopp was like, okay, let me throw you in there. And then, all, you know, all she wrote. The rest is history. Uh, not a bad word about Kenny Legend, to be honest. He and his wife went to every room. Yeah, man. Like I said, Kenny and his family, man, they've been such a loyal, loyal, loyal to the club LFC. And LFC owes them a lot. I don't think <laughs> – and I'm glad that they named the stand, I, I know. And I think Klopp also is going to have something named after him. I think the training ground is probably eventually he will have a statue there or it will be named after. We have to remember, Klopp is the longest serving manager in the EPL. And he was just there, what, eight, nine years? But anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming through the barbershop. I know everybody got a nice haircut, got their beard trim. Everybody's looking good, you know. Hollywood ends man showed up last time and you know he said one of my barbers messed up his hairline so I had to fire the barber you know so thank you so much for coming in man guys please share subscribe like the notification bell please it's very important get us to 250 we are very close like 40 away but get us there please thank you thank you thank you thank you and please have faith in the guys man the journey is almost over we cannot give up now and say we're waiting for the next manager. No, let's finish this story. When we're done, we start again with the new manager. I appreciate you, every single one of you guys. Crazy Bold. Peace.